Let's move on to India-Denmark relations, which... Uh, and both countries have actually decided to strengthen their partnership on green hydrogen, renewable energy and wastewater management. Both countries have today signed a number of MOUs between Indian and Danish companies on offshore wind and renewable energy. India and Denmark will build their partnership on capacity building and technology transfer. Danish Crown Prince Frederick Andre Hendrik Christian is in India with a big government and business delegation. I caught up with Denmark's Minister for Climate, Energy and Utilities, Lars Agard, and began by asking him about the status of the Green Strategic Partnership. Listen in. Yeah, Denmark is a global front runner when it comes to wind energy, and our two countries have collaborated on, uh, on that uh, area intensively. Uh, we work together on uh, planning on your seabed to see where in India can offshore wind be developed most cost effective. We have uh, worked together on grid planning, uh, an outlook for how the Indian uh, energy system could uh, develop. And I'm very pleased to see that there are so many uh, concrete results coming out of that, uh, that work. And uh, there's a huge interest from the Danish uh, private sector in working together with the Indian society and Indian companies to see ways forward that we can strengthen the, the green transition of the, of the Indian energy system. Because the reality is that when it comes to climate change, if, if India doesn't succeed, the world doesn't succeed. So, uh, so I'm strongly committed to working together. And, uh, and as your Prime Minister Modi has said, India has got the scale, Denmark got the competences. My impressions after two days here in India is that, uh, that India has also competences. And, and what is facing us now is a, is a need to scale up uh, because the Indian consumers need more electricity uh, and the world needs to see a more green, uh, green future. So uh, time is not on our side. But I'm so pleased that the, that the two countries can work so closely together. Right. Uh, Minister Agard, I would also like to ask you, are there certain sectors in the energy sphere where MOUs are going to be agreed upon between India and Denmark? Are there any investments being announced by the Danish private sector or the government? Uh, actually, today a number of uh, MOUs has been uh, signed between uh, Indian and Danish companies. And um, I can tell you that uh, when you look at the numbers, India uh, hosts or it hosts Danish companies that employs uh, close to 100,000 uh, people. So India is among one of the countries in the world where Danish companies are investing the most uh, and uh, creating jobs. So I, I, I only see a bright future in that respect. I think more trade will, will come. And I'm also happy to see when I'm back home in Copenhagen that it's, it's not that seldom that I meet uh, somebody from, uh, from India. So, uh, so I think there are huge opportunities here. And, and India is definitely, uh, from the commercial side, an, an interesting market to invest in for Danish uh, companies. Uh, so, so I see a bright future for everybody. And, and I, earlier today, I talked with your Minister for, for Energy, Mr. Singh. And uh, you could say all the headlines we are discussing, I mean, there are so many common challenges facing us. More renewables, more energy efficiency, better grid, uh, and going even further with the, with the next step, the indirect electrification through green hydrogen. These are all issues that we are working with in Denmark and in Europe. But it's the same issues that they are facing in uh, India. And I think by working closer together, scale will be bigger. Innovation hopefully will come, investment will come, cost will come, da come down for energy consumers, and uh, the ability for us all to meet a green future where, where it would be possible for all citizens to pay the energy bill. I mean, we can, we can reach that ambition, I'm certain of that. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you, when both sides worked on the Green Strategic Partnership last year, there was a decision to focus on green hydrogen, renewable energy and wastewater management. India has recently launched a green hydrogen mission. How do you see that roadmap that India has come up with? Uh, what kind of investments, cooperation on green hydrogen manufacturing, on electrolyzer manufacturing can we expect between Denmark and India? Uh, one of the companies that signed an MOU today was uh, Topsu, and they are world leading in, in electrolyzers. So collaboration is already there. But I, I, from my heart, I must salute the, the Indian hydrogen uh, strategy um, because we can do a lot with direct electrification, but we need uh, to see a new hydrogen economy involved. You need 
it for fertilizers, for your steel industry, for uh, refineries and so on. So the world has a huge demand for green uh, hydrogen and I'm so pleased that India has decided to take a leading role. Uh, even though Europe can do a lot, Europe cannot do it alone. Denmark can do a lot, but certainly not alone. And, and the commitment from the Indian government is, uh, is a gift to the green transition. And I, I truly salute that. And my expectations are actually uh, quite high. Uh, together, I hope we can bring costs down. Uh, and it goes, of course, hand in hand with the, our ambition on seeing the expansion of uh, wind energy, because you need the energy from somewhere to, to do the, the hydrogen. And offshore wind, together with green hydrogen, has a huge potential. So, so I, I truly salute the, the, uh, the ambitions from the green uh, Indian government. And uh, I'm looking forward to expand our collaboration in, in that area too. In the beginning, we have focused a lot on, on uh, just working together on getting enough energy for everybody. And the next phase will be uh, the innovative, ambitious uh, targets that are now set for green hydrogen. And also there, I'm sure that Denmark and India will collaborate closely. Uh, Minister Agard, any joint targets that have been agreed upon during this visit of yours? Um, as, as I mentioned, I have uh, earlier today had uh, uh, a very fruitful dialogue with your energy minister, uh, Mr. Singh, and, uh, and we, uh, we confirmed our ambition of working closer together. And some of the headlines for that will be, of course, expansion of renewables, energy efficiency, and, and, and as, uh, as mentioned, mentioned, hydrogen. So these are core topics for the future collaborations among us. And I'm, as a new minister on this area in Denmark, I'm, I'm so thrilled that I can uh, do my part of the job in making sure that the interest for working together with India is, uh, is strong within the Danish government. Right. Uh, minister Agard, I would also like to ask you, it's been over a, over a year since the Ukraine war began. And Russia's invasion, war against Ukraine, the offensive there continues. Uh, and this has really impacted the global energy supply chain, fertilizer supply chain. Give us a sense of how Denmark is uh, working its priorities out as a result of this war, future-proofing its energy strategy. Mm. Um. Denmark is a quite cold country, so we use a lot of energy for heating in, in our housing sector. And a lot of that energy comes from imported natural gas, and Russia has been the main supplier for Europe. Uh, within the last year, not only in Denmark, but throughout the European Union, there has been a huge focus on, on getting rid of our dependency of uh, natural gas. So we have opened import lines from other parts of the world, LNG, but the most important thing is the commitment from the Danish and also partly from European consumers. Consumption of natural gas has dropped remarkably. Um, in my office, for example, in winter times, it's not legal anymore in public offices to have more than 19 degrees uh, during winter time. Um, so we have done a lot to save on natural gas and, and diversify. Uh, not only Denmark, but Europe's potential for importing. And then a specific Danish thing is that we have increased our production of biogas tremendously within the last year. So all countries need to take, uh, to take action. Uh, we need to lower our dependency on importing fuels from, uh, from, from Russia. And also in that respect, I mean, I would also like to, to salute the, uh, the Indian ambition of expanding your solar panel industry because it, no matter where we look, it's good for the world that we have several suppliers. So energy security, climate and cost of energy, it, it all are linked and, uh, and we must have focus on all things at the same time. But, but the Ukraine crisis is terrible. So, uh, so there's a huge focus on that and it continues. Right. Uh, my final two questions. How important is India and energy ties with India in your strategy when it comes to decoupling from Russian energy? Well, um, Denmark is not importing or Europe is not importing that much uh, energy directly from, uh, from India, as you probably know. 
but but uh, the reason, one of the reasons why I'm so thrilled about your focus on the green hydrogen economy is that we need to see a future where green hydrogen can be produced without using fossil fuels. We need to see fertilizers produced without using fossil fuels. Uh, so part of my enthusiasm about your strategy on green hydrogen is, is linked to, uh, you can say, the overall future picture on how we could uh, make sure that the world can get enough clean and, uh, and affordable energy from, uh, from uh, reliable sources. And in my mind, India is a reliable source.